This question, we're going to find the centroid of the area bounded by uh, several functions here. Now, these three functions are just lines. 2 x equals x equals, those are vertical. The y equals is horizontal. We have one curve. And what I'm going to do is divide x squared minus 16. So we got y equals 1 over x squared minus 16. That's the curve. Now, we're going between 5 and 7. And I believe those x values make this positive. So we're going to plug in 5 and 7 in for x. And when we square them, uh, as long as they're bigger than 4, because 4 squared is 16, which would make that 0, as long as they're bigger than 4, this whole fraction will stay positive. And that's important because it's going to be the upper function. I have all the formulas we need here. The upper function is f. The lower function is g. Our g of x is the x-axis. So our g function is 0. It's this right there. All right, and this is our f of x function, the upper function. It was important to check and make sure that this function was above the x-axis. If it was other x values, like x values closer to 0, this function would be negative, and it would be the bottom function. And then g, this 0 function would be the top function in that case. Okay, we have a few things to do. You can assume in the density formulas that rho or p, if you want, equals 1. And I'm just going to ignore these and just uh, act like they're 1. This question only asked us about the x-coordinate of the centroid. So I need to get m, and I need to get mx. And then the centroid uh, is xy, and the x is the mx over m. The my, which we don't need, is my over m. And so here's, again, little m, and here's the big mx and the big my. We don't need my, so let me go ahead and just cross it out so we don't get confused. All right, let's get started. I'm going to copy down m, and then we'll plug everything in, and I'm assuming row is 1. A and B are the x values. For us, they're 5 and 7. Here's our f of x. Okay, how do we integrate this? I think this is a trig, an inverse trig antiderivative. This is in the partial fractions section, so absolutely you could use partial fractions, and I think when we square them next, we're going to have to. I don't really feel like using partial fractions now, but I'll, we'll do it. This will just be a long video. All right, x squared minus 16 is x minus 4 times x plus 4, difference of squares. And we decompose it. The first one is x minus 4. The second one is x plus 4. They have a degree 0 polynomial above the degree 1 factors. Multiply by the entire denominator. And we have 1 equals ax plus 4 plus bx minus 4. All right, we're going to let x equal, we'll go negative 4 first. So that zeroes out x plus 4. So it's 0 plus b times negative 4 times negative 4. So that's negative 8. Divide both sides by negative 8. And b is negative 1 eighth. All right, how to get a? We're going to let x equal the other x value that will zero out x minus 4, which is x equals positive 4. And so we have 1 equals a times 4 plus 4 plus 0. So a is positive 1 eighth. 
Okay. Integral, five to seven. Oh, fractions are so fun. Negative one eighth over x minus four plus one eighth over x plus four dx. So I'm going to take the antiderivative now. They're both one over x minus four, the other one's one over x plus four. So it's negative eighth ln x minus four. I'm doing this pretty quick because you should have done enough antiderivatives now that these are not a big deal. Lots of vertical lines from five to seven. Okay, we could factor an eighth all the way out. Negative ln of seven minus four is three. Uh, plugging in seven first. Plus, and again, I took the one eighth out, but that still has the first ln still has a negative coefficient. All right, seven plus four is eleven. We're gonna have decimals here, hooray! And plugging in five minus negative ln five minus four is ln of one, which is zero. And plug in here, we have plus ln 5 plus 4 is 9. 1 eighth times. Okay, ln 3 plus ln 11. ln 1 is 0, that disappears, minus ln of 9. All right, you could write it as a single ln, and the numerator is 11, and the denominator is three times nine, which is 27. And it'll just be a little faster on the calculator. You want to hit ln so many times. This is m. All right, it took a while to get there. Next, we're gonna find mx. And we are gonna check that formula. So it's not just squaring the two and subtracting, it's a one half in front, which I totally would have forgotten if I didn't scroll up. And again, our g function is zero. So that just g squared disappears. Still five to seven. Now that f function was a couple ways to write it. Uh, I could square that or I could square that. And I'm gonna square the factored version. All right. I'm gonna square them. Square the one is one, easy. Square the other two factors. Okay, all I'm gonna do is the decomposition part of this. I'm not gonna do the antiderivative because it's gonna be a bit annoying and you've probably done some of those similar ones already. So we're just gonna go for the decomposition. So now we have squared factors. Which is a bit annoying because you get one term for the factor to the first power and you get additional term for each higher power. Luckily for us, we only have squared. So these are both for the x minus four, but because it's squared, not only do I have x minus four squared, but I get all the lower powers as well. And the x plus four squared, I get one for x plus four and one for x plus four squared. Uh, yes, this is degree two overall, but the irreducible degree is one, which is why you see a degree zero above it. All right, multiply by the denominator to clear it all out. All right, what happened with the A? Well, remember I'm multiplying by that denominator, so one of the x minus four squareds will cancel, 
we're still left with 1. When I multiply that denominator times b, the x minus 4 squared cancels completely. And we're left with x plus 4 squared plus c times x minus 4 squared x plus 4 plus d times x plus 4 squared cancels x plus 4 squared and the x minus 4 squared. All right, this is going to pretty much be a nightmare. If I plug in x equals positive 4, I will zero this out and I will zero this out if x is positive 4. Oh, I'll zero that out as well. Okay, we could do some damage with some x values here. Let's do that. Lex, let x equal 4. All right, lots of places to plug in x. Don't forget to plug it in in any of these places. So you plug in here, it's going to zero out that. So we get 0 plus b times 4 plus 4 squared plus 0 plus 0. 4 plus 4 is 8, squared is 64, divide both sides by 64, and that's b. Ay, ay, ay. Alright, so that's b. I believe we can play the same game with x equaling negative 4, because it will zero out those terms and just leave us with the last term. Let x equal negative 4. And we're going to get 1 equals 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus d times negative 4 minus 4 squared. Now, we're squaring negative 8. So it's going to be positive 64. Divide both sides by 64. 1 64th is d. And we can plug that both of those values back into this monstrosity above. Don't know A. Oh, we still got to destroy. Oh, my goodness. Ah, there should only be two unknowns. A lot of X's, but the unknowns, we, we found out two unknowns, so we only have two unknowns left, so it won't be that bad. All right. Still doesn't, it's not going to be fun. All right. So A. I'm writing x plus 4 squared as x plus 4 times x plus 4. Uh, b, I'm not doing any algebra. We know b and we know d. Oops, what am I doing? Plug in the value for b, which is 1 64th. x plus 4 squared plus c times x minus 4. I'm intentionally writing the squares as the thing times itself. So I just ex wrote x minus 4 squared. That way I did. And plus d is 1 64th. All right. Let's, next step. I'm going to multiply that. I'm going to multiply that. Why? Because they're difference of squares, so it's super easy. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is square these, and I'll bring it to the other side. I kind of feel like multiplying by 64 because I really don't like fractions. <sighs> Should we? Let's get crazy. Do all this at one time. All right, 64. We better not do too, too many things at one time. All right, a times, all right, x minus four times x plus four, x squared minus 16 times x plus four, plus, oh, I didn't even multiply that by 64. All right, x squared plus four x, four x is eight x 
plus 4 squared is 16. Again, this 1 64th disappeared because I multiplied by 64. Plus 64c times x minus 4. Now I am multiplying those two together, and that's x squared minus 16. Plus 1 64th disappears because I multiply by 64. So I have x squared minus 4x minus 4x is minus 8x. Minus 4 times minus 4 is positive 16. Yikes. I wish my paper was twice as wide. All right. I will need to FOIL those, I will need to FOIL those, and subtract everything else to the left side. Let's do the subtraction first. I underline these on purpose so the things that are not underlined are going to get moved. So we'll do the x squared first. Negative x squared minus x squared is negative 2x squared. 8x cancels, negative 8x, those disappear, that's fantastic. 16 and 16 is 32 but you're subtracting it, so it's 64 that was already there, minus 32, which is positive 32. I did write 0x intentionally, because I want to uh, remember there are no x's there, and that also made it clear that I should have written x squared right there. All right, right side, here we go. 64a times... Now I am doing that multiplication right now. x squared times x is x cubed plus 4x squared minus 16x minus a lot, uh, 64 plus 64. There should be a variable there. We'll pretend like that c is still there. It should still be there. 64c times x times x squared, x cubed, x squared times negative 4x, negative 4x squared, something, negative 16x, positive 64. Oh man, these numbers will get big. Oh yeah, yeah. And arithmetic is my least favorite subject. Come on, computer, you could do it. Oh. All right. From here, I'm not going to do any more because I don't know what 64 times 64 is without writing it out. It's going to take too long. Actually, I don't think that's even important. All right, let's not give up. 64, so what I'm doing now is distributing this into the four terms here. Okay, 64a x cubed plus 64 times four, 256x squared minus, oh my goodness, 16 times 64. Calculator. Can I use my other computer? Pretend like I'm not doing this. All right, I should know these. 16 times 64. You can always write these in powers of two. That's probably what I should have done. 1024, where in the, what was I doing? That's how many AXs we have. Minus 64 squared. 4096. A, now we're running out of room. Surprise we made it this far. All right, so we have the same thing over here with just some different negative signs, it looks like it. 64cx cubed minus 64 times 4 is 256. 256cx squared 
minus 1024 CX plus 4096 C. Oh my God. This actually is less bad than it looks. It looks pretty miserable. 0x cubed uh, minus 2x squared plus 0x plus 32. Okay, there's four powers of x, and there's only two unknowns, so it's actually not that bad. All right, I'm going to match the x cubes first. 0x cubed equals, here are my two x cubed terms. So factoring out x cubed, I have 64a plus 64c, so that's one linear equation. Now we're gonna go degree two, so that's the x squared terms, negative two, just the coefficients, we're leaving out the x squareds. Uh, that should have an a there. So it's two, 56a minus 256c, and degree one, there's zero x's, and that matches up with negative 1024a minus 1024c. Last up, 32 is the only terms I haven't drawn all over. Oh boy. All right, first one, that first equation is actually not bad. Let's multiply both sides by 1 64th. Zero is a plus c. All right, next equation. Let's multiply both sides by negative 1 half. So we got 1 equals 128. Yeah, negative 128. A, I multiply by negative one half, so it's plus 128C. Next up, this one's super easy. Uh, multiply both sides by negative 1024. Zero times anything is zero. And then that becomes A plus C. Yep. You'll notice equation one and equation three tell you the exact same information. So you don't need to keep both of them. Last up, what's 4096 divided by 32 is 128. So if I divide both sides by negative 120, I can't even talk, divide both sides by 32 and you will have negative 128A plus 128C. And again, these two equations are repeats. All right, but we only had two unknowns and four equations, which means we probably were gonna get repeat information. We do have a linear system we need to deal with. And it's actually not bad. Let's just use the two equations that are on the screen. Uh, so we have zero equals a plus C, so A is negative C. And now we're gonna uh, solve for one and then substitute it in. And I'm gonna sub in negative C right there. A lot of times I'll use row reduction inside of a matrix, uh, but it just, we didn't need, that would've been overkill for this. Totally would've worked here and I'd probably be done already. But I didn't do it. What? All right, so 128 plus 128 is two. Negative, positive, positive 256, C is one. One over 256 is equal to C. Wow. Uh, we do need to find A. A is negative C, so that means A is negative 1 over 256. 
there's A, there's C, there's D, there's B. So we have A, B, C, A, B, C, D. <sighs> okay, we can now plug into here and then integrate. Uh, then integrate. Uh, you're going to get some natural logs uh, when you integrate these. A U sub will get you out of both of these situations pretty easily, actually. Uh, you'll just use the anti-power rule once you get that, because you'll be looking at basically integral 1 over U squared DU, uh, and that is U to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 plus constant, but that will disappear when you plug in your 5s and 7s. So that's uh, negative 1 over U. All right, so that'll be both of the squares right there. So that should get you this. And again, you're looking for a decimal, so you're going to need to use a calculator at some point to come back to decimals. And then you should get that. But this video has gone long, long enough, so I think we're probably done here.